Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to um, discover the basal problem. Now, what the basal problem uh, states is the infinite summation of square reciprocals. And now what I mean with square reciprocals, I mean as uh, the squared in the denominator. So for example, 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared and so on and so forth, which simplifies to 1 over 1, 1 over 4, 1 over 9, 1 over 16, all the way to 1 over nth squared, which is actually the 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 Riemann zeta function at 2 okay so the the first person to solve this was actually Euler and I'll show you the way that Euler did it uh, in, in order to understand how he did it you're gonna have to uh, have two, two things um, at, at your disposal the, manip the manipulation of roots and the infinite series specifically the Taylor series now uh, we're, we're only going to need to know one it's not going to be that deep and I'm not going to review Taylor series either okay before we start we're going to go over roots now if I give you a simple quadratic function such as x squared plus 4 x plus 4 you immediately should know that it breaks up into x plus 2 times x plus 2 now by looking at this at equals 0 you can actually see that the root is that x equals negative 2. So let's look at the root of this function. Root is x equals negative 2. Now usually to derive the function we, we, we were provided with, you usually add plus 2 to the side and you get x plus 2, just like we see right here. But two functions can, can arrive from this. Instead of um, moving it through addition, let's actually divide it. So x divided by negative 2 equals 1, because here you divide in negative 2 like this, negative 2 divided by negative 2 equals negative x over 2 equals 1. Now let's actually move this negative x over 2 to the other side using addition, which gives us 0 equals 1 plus x plus 2, which there are two of them, so, and, and if you actually expand it you get 1 plus x plus x squared over 4. Now these two functions, the ones that I have in boxes, have the same roots However, these are uh, slightly different functions. The only difference is that this function is one-fourth smaller. What I, what I mean, if you just multiply times 4, you'll get the exact same function. Now, I introduced you uh, this method because uh, Euler exploit this quite, uh, he exploits this quite frequently. And he writes uh, functions in different methods based on what the roots are. So now let's actually go into the problem. So what, what he was playing around with that, that day was a sine function. Now, he wrote the sine function using the, the, the Taylor infinite um, series, which pretty much um, uh, breaks up any function into uh, infinite polynomial. In this case, x minus x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on and so forth. Odd powers divided by uh, odd factorials. Now, what he did, at first it'll look uh, unintuitive, but I'll explain. He divided by x. So we're going to divide everything by x. x divided by x. 1. x cubed divided by x. This gives us squared, um, x to the 5th divided by x, x to the 4th, x to the 7th divided by x, x to the 6th, so on and so forth. I'll just write one more. And right now, it should not make any sense to you. Uh, it didn't make sense uh, to me when I first did it, but uh, you'll, you'll see why. And then he thought to himself, okay, let's actually write this in another way. Now, what he did, he's like, Let's get the roots. Now, of this function, sine x over x, the roots are only dependent upon the sine function. Now, uh, that's important, and you'll see why. Uh, the x values of which you'll get x equals, uh, the function equals 0 are x equals pi, x equals negative pi, x equals 2 pi, and so on and so forth. Uh, every n pi. Uh, my bad. I'm just writing it in a convenient way so you can see it. And you'll see how we'll manipulate this. So on and so forth. Now what he did is the, is the following. He did the same idea. He wrote x equals pi. Instead of subtracting it towards this side, he divided. Divided by pi in both sides. So you're left with x over pi equals 1. Then he moved it using subtraction in order to get 0 equals 1 minus x over pi. And you can do the same thing for uh, for the other roots. x to the negative pi, same idea. You'll have x over negative pi equals 1. Move it to this side, you're left with 1 plus x to the pi. And he did that for all of these things. Of course, not for the infinite amount, but uh, he, he had the idea. I'll, I'll, I'll write it in a cleaner paper. The first root, 
for x equals pi is n minus x over pi. For x equals negative pi was 1 plus pi over x, uh, x over pi, my bad. And then for the other one, for example, when x equals uh, 2 pi, he, he did the same thing. He divided by 2 pi in both sides. And then he moved it over there. So my 1 minus x over 2 pi. So as you can see, a pattern arises. So here we have 1 minus, two, uh, 1 minus x over 2 pi times 1 plus x over 2 pi and so on and so forth. The denominator just increases. Uh, pi, pi, 2 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 3 pi, so on and so forth. And now he just uh, he grouped the, these terms together. Now it, it should look pretty obvious that when you multiply these things, 1 times 1, and because this is negative and positive, you'll see that this simply equals this. And then the second part, same idea, negative and plus, and that means the middle term will cancel out. And I'm just expanding it. If you can't see it, just uh, expand it like you normally would. And uh, the third term will also be the same thing. 1 minus x squared, but here will be 9 pi squared. Because here you'll have 1 minus x over 3 pi, 1 plus x over th uh, 3 pi. When you multiply it, you'll get this. Okay, so it, this is the very important part. Now what he did is like, okay, this right here, and this obviously continues to the, uh, infinite. This thing right here is the, another representation of the original function, sine of, sine of x over x. So he said sine of x over x is simply the, the, the thing we did, just written in, di in a different method. And when he did this, I'd, at his time, uh, people didn't, did not believe him until he, they got the, the, the rigorous proof. So it continued all the way to infinity. Now, what he did is the following, and uh, play, pay close attention. He, can, he expanded it one more time. Because, remember, the sine of x over x, it, using its Taylor representation, uh, has an infinite amount of x, x squared, x fourth, x six, so on and so forth. Now, you're going to see that appearing right now. So let, let's actually expand this, a couple of terms, I promise it won't. So pretty much we're going to expand the, this function right here, but we're only interested in terms of the x squared. So what I mean is, uh, when instead of expanding the traditional way, you'll get uh, tons of other terms, let's actually do, do it with uh, x squared counting. So here you're going to multiply 1 times 1, you'll get 1. Uh, and you'll multiply it times 1, and you'll get 1, okay? Here, uh, 1 times uh, the second term will give us negative x squared over 4 pi squared. Same thing here. When you multiply times 1 times negative x squared pi, you'll get the negative x squared pi. And then when you expanded all these terms over here, you're also going to get negative x squared 9 pi squared. Now, right now, you might be confused, but um, of course, we, we have the other terms. But uh, you, you can try it by hand. Expand the first two terms or three terms. You'll see that there's always going to be an accumulation of these x squared terms. So, uh, let, let's first agree that uh, th these are one of the terms, because of, of course there are infinite amount of terms. And let's actually write it like this. Negative x squared over pi, plus, uh, of course, minus x squared, 4 pi squared, minus x squared, 9 pi squared, and so on and so forth. Now we're only interested in the x squared terms, and uh, all the other terms, so we forgot about them, we don't need them. So now. He did all of the, of the following because he saw the following pattern. If you extract the x squared from the numerator, specifically negative x squared, you're left with 1 over pi plus 1 over 4 pi squared uh, plus 1 over 9 pi squared. And then extract the pi uh, My bad. There's a pi squared right here. Extract the pi squared. Negative x squared over pi squared. You're left with 1 over 1, and now you should be freaking out here, 1 over 9, so on and so forth. Yes, these are the reciprocal squared terms. Exactly. Now, and now, let's go back to the initial question I posed, which was, why do we divide by x? Well, he divided by x because right here, we see that there's an x term. Now, what, he's go what he did, he, he related the coefficients of this x squared term with this term. Now... I'll explain right now. So, this thing right here is the sigma that, that we're looking for. So, for example, 
we can write the following sigma n equals 1 all the way to infinity of uh, 1 over n to the square this is the actual uh, summa the infinite summation of reciprocal squares which is equivalent to this right so if these sides are equivalent all we have to do 1 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 9 okay so these are equivalent so we're gonna have to also transfer these terms right here so I'm not doing anything I'm just writing uh, the same thing in both sides uh, these things are the same thing right this is equal to this and this is just the same thing as there I'm writing this because it will set up the manipulation so what I want to do right now is okay let's look at the x squared this x squared now it belongs to this so pretty much what we did uh, remember that uh, how we said the infinite poly polynomial right here Th this polynomial is equal to sine x over x that means that that is equal to this expression as well and now remember remember how we isolated only the x squared terms in other words uh, th these factors right here this number right here this coefficient times the x squared must be equal to the coefficient of this x squared that we see right here in other words if you don't see it clearly yet, don't worry, it'll make sense right now. Um, if we have this x squared alone, and and uh, the whole number mu multiplied times itself, in, in other words, this uh, negative uh, 1 over pi squared, and then right here we have a 1 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 9, if you see all of this right here it's just a number it's going to be the coefficient now what coefficient do we see in front the only coefficient right here we see negative 1 over 3 factorial right so this thing right here must be negative over 1 3 factorial right times x squared it looks the same right they must be the same because they're the same function so we have negative 1 over 3 factorial times x squared equals what we had right here the sigma summation uh, in summation n equals 1 infinity 1 over n to the second power and of course we had the negative x squared over uh, what was it pi squared now here we have the x squared cancelling out okay and now we want to isolate this thing right here so we're going to move everything to the other side. The negatives also cancel out. And now we're just going to multiply times pi squared. Into both sides. And we're left with pi squared is over 3 factorial. Which is the same thing as pi squared over 6. Is equivalent to the infinite summation of uh, re reciprocal squares. And that's a very surprising uh, answer. Because a, a certain summation, as we've seen before... Right here, 1 over 1 over 4 plus 1 over 9 plus 1 over 16 actually gives us pi squared over 6. Now, if you don't believe me, you can actually start plugging into your calculator the first few summations. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do that for now. Let's see. 1 plus 1 divided by 4 plus 1 divided by 9 plus uh, 1 divided by 16 plus uh, 1 divided by 25. Okay, we'll stop there. That gives us 1.463, right? Now let's put in pi squared, which is the exact answer, divided by 6. 1.64. You see how th these numbers are getting close? I just have to add more numbers to to this part right here. And we, we'll get the, if you continue infinitely, we'll actually get the same answer. And that, that was very surprising. Hopefully it was very surprising for you as well. Thank you.